Hello everyone, we are group four. We are David, Ale, Hajin, Alberto, Beatrice and Nick. And we are going to talk about Tesla. These are the topics that we are going to cover during this presentation. And first of all, I want to answer the following question. What is Tesla? I think that everybody knows what is Tesla, but just as a reminder, Tesla is an American electric vehicle and clean energy company that was founded in 2003 and that right now is located in Palo Alto, California. Now I'm going to give you a brief overview of Tesla history, industry and business. As I said before, Tesla was founded in 2003 as Tesla Motors by two American entrepreneurs. The funding of the company was achieved by various sources, but the major contributor was Elon Musk, who contributed more than $30 million, and because of that, he became the new chairman of the company in 2004. In 2008, the first Tesla cars were released. It was called the Roadster, and with the Roadster, Tesla achieved something that no other company had done before, and was to entirely produce an electric car that could satisfy the consumer needs. The problem with the roster was that it was really expensive. It was nearly $100,000. And also if they have a problem with recharging the batteries because the original roster needs about 24 hours and 84 hours to recharge completely the batteries of the car in a standard situation. So this is a big thing if you want to compete with other car manufacturers. In 2008, the two um, founders of the company decided to leave to leave and because of that Elon Musk became the new the new CEO. In 2010 Tesla went public and in 2012 Tesla decided to stop producing the roster and produce a new model, the model S sedan, which was a little bit less expensive than the roster but continued to be expensive. And they also decided to produce the supercharger stations, which are stations in which Tesla's consumers can recharge the battery of their cars without paying any money. At the beginning there was just six located in California, but right now in 2020, there are about 16,000 all around the globe. In 2013, finally, Tesla achieved its first quarterly profit. And the following year, they decided to build the Gigafactory in Nevada, which is really important for Tesla because it's where they make all the batteries that are used in, in their supplies, in their devices. And um, we can say that 2015 is a really important year for Tesla because they wanted to expand their ambitions and they released a new car, the Model X, and also they decided to create a new line of solar energy products that were used in our houses and in, our, in the businesses. And because of that, as Tesla was no longer just going to focus their production on cars, they wanted to change their name in 2017. And instead of being known as Tesla Motors, they became Tesla Inc. And finally, in 2018, the company faced several problems related with the production and the legal issues. Hello, I'm Alberto. I'm going to talk about the current events affecting Tesla. The first one are the pay cuts because of the coronavirus. Uh, the vice president level and above has a 30% pay cut, directors and above 20%, and everyone else in the company has a 20, uh, 10%. And uh, hourly workers that they are not able to work from home, they are on unpaid leave, but the good thing is that Tesla is paying for the health insurance for all of them. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the production. Uh, the factory in California, which is the only one who is as uh, assembling cars here in the U.S., has suspended the production. And they also have problems with lower quality and slower chips because the production, they, have, they are having problems with the supply chain. That means that the, these chips that we're creating now, they are not arriving to the factories, so they have to use a, a chips that they were using last year, and that, that is affecting the company. Uh, the quality product, uh, it's really bad because of that, because of this uh, supply chain. And Tesla 3, uh, which is the new car that, it's an economic car that Tesla produced, like a few years ago, uh, they were promising 2,500 units uh, and they are only producing like 1,026. So a lot of people is still waiting to, uh, to get their cars. And the last problem is the autopilot problems. 
Uh, last year, there was a fatal, a fatal crash uh, where an Apple employee died. And it was because he was using the autopilot driver system. And the family has sued Tesla because of this. And Tesla, we think that Tesla should improve this autopilot system because it's something that they want to use to differentiate from other companies. And if it's not working and these things happen, it's going to affect the company and everything. Could you go to the next slide? According to chapter 24 of our textbook, one of the main ways the businesses gauge their own performance is known as the balanced scorecard method. And seeing that the end purpose of this presentation is for us to say whether or not Tesla is a good investment, I figured that the best way for us to gauge their performance is to look at their performance as they would likely look at it themselves. So getting straight into things, let's look at the financial perspective. Since the year 2017, about 81.2% of Tesla's total revenues have been attributed to their automotive sales. So to the prospective investor, it is very nice to see that their automotive sales have increased by 13.16% over the past year, that is between 2018 and 2019. However, what you do not like to see is that the cost of their automotive sales has increased by 16.46%, which more than matches this growth. This, this growth. Um, in part due to this, Tesla operated at a net loss last year uh, of $862 million. And unfortunately, this has become a little bit of an uncomfortable trend for the company. They have lost money every single year since 2013. Uh, now clearly finances aren't their most attractive perspective to investors. However, they do gain some ground in their market share in the electrical vehicle industry. <clears throat> According to a 2019 Business Insider report, Tesla leads the entire United States auto industry, whether they produce electrical vehicles or standard vehicles, they lead the entire industry in customer approval ratings with the average approval rating amongst the cars that they produce right now at 89 out of 100. When you look at specifically the electrical vehicle industry, Tesla absolutely dominates the market with a 78% market share. And what is even more remarkable is that 60% of the entire auto industry for electrical vehicles is attributed to one single car that Tesla produces, and that is the Model 3. The Model 3 has been absolutely revolutionary for the company because it's their first step into the mass market, um, as in this car, uh, this car has lots of the luxury um, luxury equipment that uh, the other the other cars from Tesla do, um, but it's available at a much much cheaper price and is available to much many more Americans. Uh, on top of this, uh, Tesla also dominates the industry in customer retention. About 80.5% of all Tesla owners will rent or lease another Tesla as their next car. The internal business perspective for Tesla puts their finances in much better perspective. <clears throat> According to the most recent 10K filing, Tesla spent an average of $1.4 billion per year on research and development since 2017. That is about 8% of their yearly revenue, not just their net income, but their revenue spent on research and development. I said earlier that in 2019, they operated at a loss of $864 million. However, their research and development extent expense was 155% of this net loss at $1.343 billion. Now I put the next point in uh, bigger letters and in bold because it's by far the most important thing to understand on this slide. While Tesla has operated at a net loss every single year since 2017, their research and development expense has exceeded their net loss by an average of 36%, which means that the reality for the company isn't as much that they can't pay their bills. It's uh, that they are banking on today's net loss and today's investment to result in tomorrow's innovation, tomorrow's uh, building sales. And they've already begun to reap the benefits of this with the Model 3, as I mentioned in the last slide, absolutely dominating the market. So learning and growth is the final perspective, um, and it's concerned with keeping good workers in the company and promoting a healthy work culture. And unfortunately, this is another place where Tesla seems to struggle a little bit. According to a 2019 Bloomberg Report article, uh, their executive turnover rate is about 27% annually. And investors really do not like to see instability in a company. What they like to see even less is when that instability seems to increase the further up the corporate ladder you climb. And that's exactly the truth for Tesla. About 44% of executives that report directly to owner Elon Musk leave the company every single year. Now, Tesla has declined to comment on either of these figures, which makes it really hard to know uh, whether these executives are leaving 
because of the demanding work of one of the most innovative employers in the entire world, or whether this is just becoming an uncomfortable trend for the company. Uh, but one fact that I did find is that within the last five years, Tesla's had three or more individuals serving at the following positions. Chief Accounting Officer, General Counsel, and Vice President of, Automotive, of Autopilot Software. Now, one thing that an investor might want to look at when they see this kind of executive turnover is whether their S&A expense is increasing year in and year out as a result of having to train new executives uh, when that cost could be saved by just retaining the executives that you have. But this doesn't seem to, the case, uh, to be the case, at least quite yet, as their S&A expense has only grown at about 3.84% per year since 2017. Okay, my name is David, and I'm gonna do the horizontal and the vertical statement analysis of Tesla. First, I'm gonna do the horizontal analysis, and first I'm gonna apply the horizontal analysis to the income statement. The first thing we can see in this income statement is that we have a negative income. As we said previously, Tesla has had problems with its negative net income since it, it's had a negative income, net income for a long time. It's true that um, in 2019, it was, it was reduced, uh, basically an 11% from 2018, but it still has a big room for improvement. Um, what else can we see in this income statement? We see that um, the national revenue have increased, but also the cost of goods sold have increased. And as we see the percentages, cost of goods sold have increased more than the net sales revenue. So right now in 2019, it costs more relative to the total sales. And that's a problem. We also had an increase in the gross profit, but it was a really low increase, not even a 1% of the increase. And another thing we can see in this income statement is the expenses. The expenses have come down, but they're still really high. That's something Tesla has to work on. Now we're gonna do the horizontal analysis, applying it to the balance sheet. As we still have a, a big increase in the current assets from 2018 to 2019, here we see a 70%, that's an increase, a really incredible increase. We also have almost a 30% of increase from 2017 to 2019 of cash, and that's really good because that implies that Tesla has liquidity, and that's important for our company. Also, current assets have increased. That implies that the company has assets that, and that adds value to the firm. And as much, and it also does that with total assets. The total assets have increased up fifteen percent, adding a lot of value to the firm. And um, finally, in the horizontal analysis, we're gonna do the liabilities in the stockholders' equity of the balance sheet. About the liabilities, we can see the current liabilities have come down from 2018 to 2019, a 30%. That's a, that's a, a big deal because current liabilities are short-term debt. That implies that Tesla is not going to have the, the debt in short term. But the problem is that in the total liabilities have increased and 11% that we see here. And that's a problem because that implies debt that implies a financial obligation that Tesla has to overcome. Finally, in the stockholder equity, uh, we can see that the total stockholder equity has gone up, and that's good for the company. Also, in this horizontal one, uh, analysis, we I've done a trend analysis of the revenue of Tesla revenue from 2015 to 2019. Uh, using 2015 as the base, we can see how in this graph how it has evolved, how it, it, the revenue has really gone up. And it's really interesting to see the revenue they had in 2015 and the revenue they have now in 2019. Now I'm gonna do the vertical analysis and first I'm gonna apply it to the income statement. I'm gonna say that basically we're using the same numbers which we're using 2019 and 2018. So it's basically pretty similar. We're also gonna talk in the next in the next slides about the income statement of the vertical analysis, so I'm gonna be pretty brief. So as we said, <clears throat> well, we're using as the base the net sales revenue. And as we said, there's a negative net income. It has been reduced, as we see. And the cost of goods sold, they've increased, and they're a big, they're a big amount compared with the net sales revenue. And since the net sales revenue is the base, we can see this 80% compared with the 81, so they have gone up. 
also not appropriate. Has gone up, but in comparison with the lesser revenue, it's a less percentage. And now, in the in applying the vertical analysis to the balance sheet, we can see that current test has had, uh, now we're using total assets as the base. We can see the current assets have gone up, but so around 6%, something like that, compared with the total assets. Um, we can also see the cash, as we said, that it has gone up, but it's not a really big deal. Um, okay, so, and finally, uh, of the vertical analysis, I'm going to talk about the liabilities and those holder equity. Uh, but the liabilities, current, li uh, current liabilities, they've gone down, that's good for the company, they represent less for the company, that's good because current liabilities are short on debt. So in in short term they don't have to pay that. But as we said, total liabilities have gone up. Even though they represent less than they used to, they've gone up and that's a problem for the company because that debt is gonna have to be paid. And in the social or equity, we see that the total the total stores color equity has gone up and that's a good thing for the company. And it's, it has a tendency to go up. So Next slide. Alrighty, the common size analysis. So this is a form of the vertical analysis. As you can see in the equation up top, we're gonna to be using net sales revenue because I am looking at the income statements. Um, this is just so that we can compare Tesla to some of the competing uh, companies in the industry. I chose Ford and Toyota, as you can see from the data on the right. An important note before I dive into that, um, due to the nature of Tesla's niche market, it was tough to pick a competitor. There's no specific competitor that lines up with our company because they are the only like major car electric car manufacturer. So when we compare them with companies like Ford and Toyota, it's important to realize that they manufacture normal and electric car. So the data is a little skewed on what they can make up for. But getting to the info. First, if we take a look at the cost of goods sold, Tesla runs right at about the middle of the road in between Ford and Toyota, which leads us to a middle of the road gross profit between the two as well. Uh, in terms of operating expenses, we can see that they uh, put out publicly their research and development, but that's highly sought after information because this is somewhat of a cutting edge industry. Uh, the world isn't you know, completely adopting the electric cars yet, but it's getting there. Um, a quick note about this too, anytime you see those blue boxes, it just means the information wasn't provided. So think of it as a blank or something the company chose not to report. Um, we can see here that they're actually the most expensive in operating expenses out of the three, um, which gives them a negative operating income because they actually spend slightly over their revenues, like Alec mentioned earlier, trying to uh, bank off investments of today, profiting um, for them tomorrow in the future. Uh, moving on to other income and expenses, we can see that they didn't report anything in terms of interest revenue or expense. However, they have a uh, total non-operating income expense, or yeah, operating income and expenses, um, which is just total other income and expenses we see here. So with those factors included, none of which were reported, they're actually much lower at negative 2.4%, a lot lower than Ford and Toyota. Um, and then if we add the income tax and we can see that they have a total negative net income of 3.5%, uh, much lower than the competitors. But again, that should be taken with a grain of salt because they have electric and normal cars so they can balance out a lot of the uh, damages that this newer industry might cause. I'm going to talk about solvency ratio of Tesla. As you see, Tesla had debt to capital ratio 0.61 for 2019, and Tesla had debt to equity ratio of 1.80 for the 2019. In the end of the 2018, its ratio, which is lower than industry average. However, the market valuation of Tesla is overvalued, um, providing a lower ratio than other well-established automakers. In the fourth quarter, that ratio improved slightly due to merger effect. In the next slide, Tesla used to suffer from a lack of financial debt to, to persistent operating losses. Each time it was financed through capital increase. 
Tesla is a deficit company with 13 billion in debt, and it has no year achieving a yearly surplus. And it's in your surplus a difficult time in the future. Next section is will be profitability. To discuss about return on asset ratio on and return on equity ratio are negative for the company for the past years due to net loss made by company. The net loss margin percent has increased by 8%. When it comes to cash return to revenue, the company has been maintained huge closing in cash and bank balances all along, and this is the reason for this ratio to be positive. In the next slide, Tesla's net profit came to 150 million less than market expectations of 154.2 million. The annual net profit is in the red. The fund expansion of manufacturing facilities for its cars and batteries. The company Tesla is not expecting to make a big profit until 2020. However, sales exceed market expectation and net profit for the second consecutive quarter increased expectations for Tesla. Next slide is Tesla's liquidity ratio. Unsurprisingly, the section is full of bad signals about Tesla. First, current as well as quick ratios are below one and constantly decreasing. This indicates that Tesla is not able to meet all their short-term financial obligations. It has an increasing financial leverage ratio. Next slide is Tesla is likely run of cash in the coming three months. I think for Tesla, the most urgent task is to increase the production volume of Model 3. 